Uh, currently, I work in the area of safe, sustainable asphalt technologies. And what that means is that I do uh, research on how to make better asphalt pavements, where we're taking the black sticky stuff, which is actually a byproduct of the petroleum industry. So we're actually reusing um, the stuff that the petroleum industry throws away. And we're using that and mixing it with aggregates and laying down asphalt pavements. I work in one area where we're trying to do a drainage layer at the top of a pavement surface, and that drains the water off, uh, and makes it much more safer, reduces accidents, uh, reduces splash and spray. Uh, it actually cleans the, the, the runoff water as well. I work in the area of sustainable asphalt technologies by utilizing um, what we call recycled asphalt pavement. It's the most recycled product in the U.S., more than 99% recycled. We scrape up the old asphalt pavement and reuse it in new asphalt pavements. Right now we're trying to figure out ways that we can use more and more percentages of that recycled asphalt pavement. Okay, so how did you initially feel yourself? I think the biggest challenges facing water resources engineers right now uh, are trying to integrate technology with an understanding of really how people think about their water resources. Uh, to be honest, we have a lot of the technology we need. We can solve just about any problem that is, is worried about technology. The real issue that we have nowadays is getting people to think about water and to understand that it's a limited resource uh, and that they have to use it wisely. Uh, and so we're getting into new technologies and interfacing that with uh, human beings, uh, things like automated metering infrastructure, and so that people can go online and see hour by hour how much water are they using. Uh, and then when they can do that, they can say, hey, you know, I've got a leak in my house uh, and I'm using a lot more water than I ever realized because I, it's something I, I'm not even controlling. I need to call a plumber. It's simple things like that, that that I think are the big issues that we're facing nowadays that, that don't seem like they're big technical challenges, but those are really the key to the future. There are some technology applications that are going to come online soon or are just started online that are going to have a huge impact, transformative impact on how we travel and greatly reduce congestion. Uh, a couple of those are simple apps on your phone that let you carpool with strangers. And I know your parents tell you not to carpool with strangers. But this is going on right now, has been going on in three cities for the last 30, 40 years, organized carpooling with strangers called slugging. I did a research project on that. Amazingly efficient way of getting more people in the same number of vehicles. So if you look around uh, when you're driving in congested conditions in the peak hour, how many people do you see in each car? Almost all of them have one person in a car. If we could get that to where there was an average of one and a half or two people in each car, we'd eliminate congestion. How do we do that? We make carpooling easy. And how do we do that? There's a couple of new apps out there for your phone that are doing that right now in major cities around this country. In San Francisco and Austin, for example, both Uber and Lyft are ways where you type in into your cell phone, I'm at this location now, I want to go over to this location in 10 minutes, can someone give me a ride? The person on the other end of that app says, oh, I'm traveling that direction at that time, I'll give you a ride. In some cases money is exchanged, in some cases there isn't. And that's working really well for, so more people can travel in just the same number of cars. It's going to greatly impact the number of vehicles on the road and reduce congestion. But even bigger is what's coming next, the automated vehicle. That, for example, Google has had a car driving itself in Nevada over a million kilometers driven, no accidents. There's major trials going on in England next year, Sweden a couple years from now, hundreds of vehicles on the road without drivers. Can you imagine that? It's going to transform how you get from one place to another. Your car will no longer be like a car. Your car might be more like your living room. You'll have your recliner, you'll be watching TV, you need to go to another state for a meeting the next day, jump in your car late at night, watch Sports Center. next morning you go to sleep, next morning you wake up at your meeting, refreshed. These cars can drive faster, 
more efficiently, more safely, in closer groups, again, reducing congestion, and making your travel much, much easier. You go further into the future, there's going to be a place where it's illegal for the human to drive the car because the cars are such better drivers and so much more safe. That's where we're headed in transportation. That's some of the things we research here at a and I think the uh, biggest challenge in the field is uh, if you put sensors uh, all over the place, you have so many data. So the biggest challenge is how do you make sense out of the data? So you have uh, gigabytes of data and how do you get this information out what you need? And basically is to extract the information out of the data. That's the biggest challenge what I see. I think the most exciting thing for me about civil engineering is how much we still have yet to discover and how things are always changing. So as an example, uh, Portland cement concrete that we use today is very different than it was 100 years ago or even 10 years ago. Um, so waste products from many other industries uh, need to be disposed of and one of the perfect places to dispose of it is to mix it into concrete. Um, and it works great for the most part, but of course it changes our concrete. And so our concrete is always changing as new waste sources uh, become available and we start using them. Some of them improve the quality of concrete, in fact. Um, but uh, we still need to understand how they behave and how they affect our, our structures and our pavements and so on. We'll see if we can work this one in. So far as you're concerned, what are the biggest challenges to your particular line of research? So uh, as far as challenges, I, I guess that is probably uh, answered in the last question as well. The, the fact that our materials are always changing. It's not like we have the same material that the Romans had in, or that we had 100 years ago where we, we teach it and, and you learned it in class 25 years ago and it's still the same you know, today. It's always changing. We're coming up with new admixtures for concrete to change its properties and uh, you know, we're including all these different waste materials and so we really need to know what those wastes are doing inside of the concrete uh, not only for preserving the waste in the concrete but then also uh, its effect on the, the mechanical and other properties of the concrete that are of importance.